Welcome to Specific Love. Here recently, I built this awesome gaming table slash dining room table for my son's new apartment. Unfortunately, he didn't have any chairs to go under it. So for this video, I'm gonna build a nice pair of benches that should match this and look great. Let's begin. Now I'm gonna start off with the top first. I need four pieces at 38 inches long. And to keep this as efficient as possible and not have to have too much leftover waste, I'm gonna cut it on four separate boards. And I'll show you a reason why later. Now these are the four boards that we just cut. These are the 38 inches, and of these four here, I need to cut three of them at 44 inches. So let's do that. Now these three remaining pieces that I just cut, I need to cut these down to 10 inches. Now of the first four pieces that we cut, this is the only one that's still relatively long. We now need to cut two pieces at 14 inches and two pieces at 13 inches. Now at board number five, we're actually gonna cut down four pieces off of this at 16 and a half inches. Let's do that. Now I've taken the 38 inch boards, which are gonna be the top of this bench, and I've lined them together, just making sure everything is in alignment, and it is. I also have the 14 inch boards, which will be going on the ends, but before I can do any of that, I have to glue these center boards together. Now while the top is drying, I need to start working on the rest of the frame. First off, I need to do a bunch of rabbit and dado cuts. Dado cuts, take out the center section, rabbits will just be taking off an in section here. Now, I'm gonna first start off with the 13 inch boards. We're gonna do a dado so that we can have a two by four fit right in place there. So let's get started on that. Now I'm gonna be using just a single blade for all these cuts, but if you have a dado blade, it'd make this a lot faster. Now on a 13 inch boards, we actually cut the dado dead center. Now we're gonna be working with the 16 and a half inch boards. I'm actually gonna be doing these offset if you look at here, it's roughly two inches from what this will be the bottom of the boards. So we're gonna head and cut that. I'm also gonna try and attempt to cut all four of them at the same time. Now that I have the dado cut out on these, I wanna reverse two of these. I'm gonna do the front one and the back one. And I have marked down here at the bottom where I need to do a rabbit. Now I have two directions for these rabbits. On these outer two, I'm gonna cut the outer section, and on these outer two, I'm gonna cut the opposite section. That way, when everything lines up, these should go in nicely. And with the four of these cut, I now have to repeat the process on the 44 inch boards, but I have to cut it on both sides of the same side. In other words, I don't reverse, just cut this end and on the other end on this side. Now that you have everything cut, it's a good idea to just kind of rub your hand over it. You can feel any imperfection or burrs. And so you can take some sandpaper and just gently go over all the places where you've cut just to make it as smooth as possible. We don't want to remove a bunch of material. We just want to make it nice and smooth. Now that we've given the top some time to dry, I want to flip it over. And as I suspected, there is a bunch of glue squeeze out. Now we need to remove as much of this as possible. You can either use a sander, possibly some chisels, or a combination of both. In any case, we need to be very careful not to deform or take out any chunks from the top when we're doing that. So let's get started on that. Now to get down into these grooves, I've taken a piece of sandpaper. This just happens to be 220, and I'm using it on a board here that I have a real sharp edge on. And so we're just putting it on, creating a crease where that should go, holding it really tight, and just going back and forth. Now down here on the ends, I'm actually going to need to sand this down as well. Two reasons, one, less likely to get any splinters in the future, and also since I'm gonna be mating this board up to it, and this has a natural curve from the factory, I want this to also have that curve, so it looks well. So it looks like a nice seam like it is in these two joints here. So, let's work on that. All right, now that all the sanding is done, we're gonna flip this over once again so that the top of it is facing down, and then we're gonna glue on the sides. Sometimes when you don't have clamps that are big enough, you have to improvise. This might be a little bit rough, but it works. Next up, we're gonna take the outer frame and one of the legs. Make sure the notch is facing to the outside. We're gonna glue it up, stick it in place, use a corner square to make sure everything is nice and square, and then put a couple brad nails in just to make sure it stays in place while everything dries.
Now I'm gonna take the 10 inch boards and I'm gonna put pocket screws on each end. And if you happen to have any major imperfections like I had a knot right here, just make sure it's on a side that won't be seen. Now I'm gonna be attaching those 10 inch pieces to the legs we had just glued together. I'm gonna to be using glue and pocket screws just to hold them together initially. With pocket screws, they come in at an angle, so I can't have it right on the end of the surface. I'm actually gonna come in about a half inch and just give it a little more bite to the wood. Now we're gonna do the same to the opposite side, but in this case, I do not have room for the drill to fit in here, so I'm actually gonna use a ratchet using the tool and we'll get all the screws put together. Okay, I want to attach the frame to the top, and to do that, I'm gonna be using glue, but to hold it in place so that the glue has enough time to dry so I can still work on it, I need to add some pocket screws. Now, I could have done this earlier, but I did not want to put holes into the frame here because I didn't know exactly where it was going to fit into the top. So I'm gonna use one of these smaller little jigs so that I can now add some pocket screws. Now I'm gonna have a total of six screws. I'm gonna have one on each end and two on each side. And now we're gonna put a layer of glue on the top of the frame, smooth everything out, and then we're gonna flip this over and screw it down. Next up, we're gonna be putting in the support bars for the legs. Now when we do this, we need to make sure that the notch we had cut previously is facing in the upward direction so that the main bar that goes across will be resting on the top. At this point, we need to go around the whole bench and check all the edges. And if there's anything that happens to still be sharp, we need to take some sandpaper and go over that just so nobody gets any splinters or gets cut. Then we can get on a staining. Now to help this bench match the table, I've taped off the inner two boards because I want those to say a natural color and we're gonna stain the outside. Now that we have this all stained, I'm gonna give it some time to dry and then I'm gonna put on a couple coats of polyurethane. That should help prevent any stains or oils from your hand discoloring it. I love how this bench turned out. It is nice and sturdy. You don't have to worry about anybody or if you wanna pile a bunch of people on it, it should be able to handle all of that. The color coordination works great with the table, so it's just a perfect color match. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to get started on a second one of these, but I'm not gonna put you through it. But if you're, by chance you are interested in watching how to do it, just hit play again. Otherwise, have fun belly. Just do that for that. Stop, I don't know what I'm saying. Over onto its top, on the top, on the top, yeah. I'm gonna put a little couple Wait, when we press, place, press, flip it back. Whoops. <laughs>